Hi, I'm here to talk about everything that I know about surface marker boys. In getting this right, not only will you be the coolest person on the dive site with the best DSMB, but you won't get run over by a boat. Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to another video in this series of scuba diving tutorials where I'll be talking about surface marker boys. If this is your first time here and you're keen to learn about scuba diving and you want to improve some of your kit configuration and your own techniques then consider hitting the subscribe button below. In order to get notifications every time we post a new video click the little bell button at the side of it. If you haven't got a YouTube account what you're going to do well if you click this link here it'll take you to a video that shows you how to set up one really simply just takes a few minutes. And make sure you stick around to the end where I'll be giving you my top tip. So you can see hung up behind me then I've got several types of delayed surface marker boy. So the first one we've got is a lift bag. You're probably generally going to use that only if you're robbing stuff from the bottom. So you're using your lift bag then, take something from the seabed up to the surface. Nine times out of ten, it'll be just a bag of mussels or maybe a couple of lobsters that you found. But, you know, one day you might come across a bit of treasure and think, I'm having that away. So you pull out your, your drawstring bag, put your treasure in there. Do your bag up, little snap gate carabiner, clips on the bottom, that's all fastened on, hunky dory. You inflate your lift bag, that goes up to the surface, and then your treasure's all yours, or to give to the, uh, the guy who owns a wreck. Yeah, okay. As it says on here, it'll lift 35 kilos. Okay, so you, again, it's an octopus job, or, or maybe if you've got one of them Urjet guns, it's a little valve inside here, so you, you just get it in, fill it up when you need to empty it. You pull it off with the flipping clothes pegs. Knew I should have used some more grips. But you pull this dump valve anyway, and that allows all the water, uh, allows all the air out. The next one over is, it looks a little bit like a lift bag, but it's a small or training DSMB. So if you've got, a, if you're an instructor and you're trying to teach someone how to use one, they can spend the entire dive just inflating this. It's so little, you can pull it back down, you can deflate it, and they can put it back up again, then they've got the option of doing it several times as opposed to doing it just once at the very end of the dive. And then they don't really get a chance to do it again till the next dive. So skill fade will be massive. Whereas if you can sit there on the bottom as such and keep sending it up and down, up and down, you can practice to the point that you're nice and neutrally buoyant in the water, not sat on the bottom, not kicking up all the crap and not, you know, going up to the surface with it. Then moving over to my left, I've got two of your pretty standard DSMBs, both sort of stating diver below or whatever. Now these come with all the sort of common features. So on the big orange one, which is mine, it's got an overinflation and a deflate valve. So it's dead easy to dump all the air out of there. Just below that is the inflation valve. So there's two means of doing that. You can either stick it in your gob, give it a good blow, that's full. You can, inf you can inflate it using an inflation hose. You can undo one of your inflation hoses, stick it on, and then your cylinders will in inflate that enough. Now, obviously, if you're nervous of taking anything off your kit, the other option then is to use your, your secondary or your octopus. So you can unfold the bottom. It's got a little piece of lead in there to keep it weighted down, makes it a bit easier, and it'll hold open that shape. So you can get your octopus stuck in there, fill that up nice and you know, nice and big. It's got a one-way inflation valve inside it, so air shouldn't empty out the other end. And then as that goes up, off you pop. Then looking at the pink one over at the end, just to show that they come in several different colors, so yellow or pink. It's just got an oral inflate valve, so it's similar to this one, but you can only stick your gob around it and give it a blow up. Slightly bigger than, than this small one. This is a one breath. So literally, you, you know, your lungs should be enough. Let's give it a go. I'll give it the beans. So easy got loads of breath left there, but you can see a one breath um, will easily inflate that. Now there's no real reason why you'd need to, with one breath, fill it, but you can see that should you need to fill it um, at five, six meters, you, you're gonna not struggle with that, easy. And so the only way of emptying um, the oral inflate ones is just to press the, 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 the actual mouthpiece and just squeeze the air out. These ones, obviously, they've got a proper dump valve on, so you can pull the dump. So last, but by no means least, we just have the surface marker boy. Comes a little flag that sits in the top. Everyone takes the if you've got one of them. No one will take the mick out of you with that. 
and then comes the whistle that clips on on the side so if you've got any dramas you can come up and blow that instead of hollering and you just tie on underneath you just tie your reel or your spool underneath there's a couple of little different d-rings or whatever there's some handles on the side it's got a nice cover and a couple of pockets on the top gives you the inflation for the bladder that's inside it and the other one allows you to store your, your whistle in or your butties um, these are great if you're on a drift dive because they stand out like a sore thumb and you can put the flag in so everyone can see that now a tip that I'll give you when I bought this it came and it was all rolled up so every time I brought it out it just sort of sit sort of coiled up like that so what I did is I unraveled it left it flat just in the sun for an hour or two left some lead on it to hold it flat and then when I pulled it out it kind of stayed quite upright it'll do you can also use these if you were setting up a bit of a shot line and you didn't have any other kind of boy there's lead underneath in these little pockets here that just allows it to sit upright so it's not going to fall over and tend to stay on top of the waves as such so quite a good idea so that is your, just your standard surface marker boy it's left on the surface all the time so my top tip would be then firstly get on top of your buoyancy and trim make sure you're very stable in the water second of all deploy that DSMB on every single dive so as you come into the end of your dive pop it up and get used to how it feels in the water and then thirdly the hand signal is that for the reel and that for deploying the DSMB so learn that and you can be telling your mate you watch me deploy DSMB that way they know to just hang slack and let you get on with it but the more often you practice it the more second nature that skill becomes and with honing your your own personal buoyancy control you'll just look brilliant in the water and when you really desperately need to deploy that DSMB because of surface traffic or you're on your own because you've been swept away, then you can get it up and it's not a worry. So if you've got any questions or comments then on what we've covered today, please don't be afraid to leave a comment in the box below. I always try and get back to you and I'll leave you a thumbs up. And make sure you watch the rest of these videos and I'll leave a little link up here. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. See you on Insta.